I'm in Switzerland and I've come to Golf and Country Club Zurich. This course is 100 years old, but in 2015 to 2018, it underwent a major redevelopment. As part of the permission for that work, the club was required to significantly increase areas for native species, for plants and wildlife. Now, about half of the 80 hectare site is dedicated to native species. I've come here today to speak to Yannick Weber, who is the course manager, about the work that's been going on here and the successes the golf club has achieved. I met Yannick at the greenkeeping compound, where he showed me the plan of the native species biodiversity areas. So we here have the maintenance plan of all the biodiversity areas on our property and you see it is quite extensive and what I like at it is that how nicely it is. The holes are embedded by native all the way around. So those are those areas and then you have the playing areas here and the native areas all the way around giving the course the actual character. As you can see here to the left, those are all the different types of biodiversity areas. So it is not just one type of biodiversity area around the course, it is a heap of different ones. Here you have what we are trying to achieve, which species, flora, fauna are we trying to get. The aim of the maintenance, the maintenance act, the actual maintenance, and then also at what time in the year this shall be done. We began our tour behind the second green, where two types of meadow have been planted to promote native wildflowers and attract insects. So you see here it's quite thick, dense, but still a lot of flowers in it. There is up to 72, 72 to 75 different flowers growing in this meadow. So we're here in September, but what's this like in, uh, in summer? Oh, like it's probably at its best somewhere in June. You have May, June, it has all sorts of colors. It's long grown. And the beauty of it is you then let it grow. Nutrients go all the way back down into the roots and then it turns into that brown, wispy looking meadow, which is nicely waving in the wind. It really gives the golf course a character. You see it down at this bunker face, it still has that brown tinge uh, because it has never been cut this year. It will be cut somewhere in October. And a very good job has been done in giving this golf course an international standard, but the native touch. Technology is being used by Yannick and his team to help monitor plants and animals, including an app that helps identify wildflowers. Let's have a quick look what that actually is. So, Deutsche Kranz Entina, Gentia Nella Germanica. 42% chance, it looks pretty like that, yeah. So this is an app that you're, you're, you're using to, to help identify, and this, I guess, is all part of the monitoring process. It is, yes, absolutely. So, Alba and Martin would know them up top of their head, but for myself, which is looking after everything, I don't know them all, but this app is help actually helping me to identify plants and see if it is one of the species which are desired. One of the major success stories has been the return of two extremely rare native species, the mast gentian wildflower and the Olken blue butterfly, which lays its eggs on the plant. We met up with the club's biodiversity consultant, Alba Stamm, to learn how a changing course maintenance practice was key to delivering conservation of national importance. First, there was no gentian, marsh gentian here, um, but then uh, with, this, uh, with the right management of these um, areas, uh, it was possible also to, for the marsh gentian to flower because it flowers late in the year. And normally uh, on other meadows, it gets cut before it can flower. So this is a really crucial thing. It needs different co-players in an ecosystem um, that match together and work together so that an ecosystem can function. 
this is just one example of a lot of different stuff going up here with plants interactions with animals and animals with other animals and it's a whole web. The greatest thing is as well that it's not only here on this patch, we discovered it three years ago here, but now we can find it all over the other native areas of this golf court. And this is really impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Yannick explained how teamwork, combining Alba's expertise and his colleagues' passion to care for the land, is yielding results which are good for biodiversity and the golf club. So Alba is visiting us several times a year and Martin and Alba, they monitor those surfaces, analyze them and according to what they are seeing, the, the maintenance plan is basically given to us by Alba. So she lets us know when to cut this or just let it be as it is, which plants need to get picked out just a specific maintenance plan of those areas and that's being adapted to the circumstances and that can be different every year. What we have achieved together, we both are very proud about that and um, those species, they wouldn't be existing if we weren't uh, able to work closely together. Next, we went to meet Martin, one of the greenkeeping team with more than three decades experience at the club and a lifelong love of nature. We met on a bridge over a stream where Martin had installed nesting boxes for white-throated dippers and where I'd seen a kingfisher flash by earlier that morning. This is really a, a, sp a special uh, feeling when you, when you see this bird because it's so beautiful. I saw many kingfisher also in other countries, especially, especially in Asia. I go many times to Asia, but when you see here, it's really special, yes. So I got very lucky this morning when I saw yeah, one. Yeah, you was really lucky. <laughs> dart along the river here. And, and you, you see them only a quick time because they are so, so fast. Martin showed me where he'd created breeding spaces in the riverbank for kingfishers. Then, walking across one of the planted native grassland areas, he spotted a rare marsh gentian in flower. You see really good, there's the, you see the white points where they have the eggs. This, this is the, the white points, this is the eggs. So that must be quite exciting when you do, when you do see the eggs, because yes. that's also, been a, a major success story here. Also for, for about three, four years, when, when we saw it the first time, this was really... Exciting, yes. While Yannick remains committed to delivering first-class playing conditions for members, the Native Areas Project has been an important and satisfying change in the way the golf course estate is managed, benefiting nature and people. My heart is on the golf course, but working with Martin and Alba also opened my eyes about how much nature we have next to the golf course and how important it is accentuating the golf course itself. And that's what was lacking, that's what you mean, Martin, that's what was lacking before, I think, that everything was just manicured and mown, but it didn't show much character. As Alba was saying before, how nice is it to have 70 plus different flower species within a small area like yes, this, yes. Um, compared to just green. While golf has many detractors who believe golf courses are bad for the environment, I wondered what steps Golf and Country Club Zurich is taking to change perceptions and sustain not only its course and environment, but its business too. To round off my visit, I met General Manager Ian Gibbons. The image issues, the, the things that you can only address by communicating, talking to people, inviting people in here to take a look at what we're doing and the, the money that we generate a lot of it is going back into the golf course, back into the quality of the golf course, back into the quality of the area. We're also a, a very important employer in the region, uh, which is part of our sustainability plan as well. So all of these aspects, they, they play a key role, but we've got to communicate it. We have started to make um, 
events where the public can come and see our golf course, where we have our consultants, bio, uh, biology consultants with us, explaining them what we actually are doing, why certain areas like this area is left more native, left more wild, and what the different aims are. The committee has done an amazing job with reconstructing this golf course, but now it is all about maintaining it and we get closely monitored. We all do all the good things, that gives us a great biodiversity, a lot of flora, a lot of fauna. However, we have to use it as a tool as well for our industry to ensure we talk about it and let the common perception change from rather negative to very positive. We're living in a highly politicised world where public opinion and government regulation can pose a threat to golf course businesses. Here at Golf & Country Club Zurich, when they were redeveloping the golf course, strict environmental regulations were put in place that posed a challenge and an increase in costs to the business, but they took it as an opportunity. And what's been created now is the largest area of native species in the entire commune. It's an extraordinary success story. The changing greenkeeping practices that's allowed the marsh gentian to re-establish itself and in turn attract the Alcan blue butterfly, which is extinct in some parts of Europe and is extremely rare in Switzerland, is a remarkable story and it's an indicator of ecosystem health. Ultimately, this is a great example of how golf can engage with local government and also work with experts in sustainability and biodiversity to create something that is good for all. And if it's good for the planet and it's good for people, it's likely to be good for business too.